What's up, everybody, and welcome to this spoiler review for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I definitely want to go ahead and, uh, you know, stress up front, this is a spoiler review. Uh, I am one of your hosts here, Franklin F.M. McInnes, and of course I have my co-host with me, Collecting Plastic. Hey, what's up, guys? So um, we both really jumped on seeing this movie right away. Um, I, I think you probably had the same, you know, feeling that you didn't want to mess around and come across any spoilers online. Yeah, I went. I went to go watch this at eight in the morning. So, yeah, I really yeah. wanted to get ahead of the spoilers. Yeah, and I saw the opening um evening um, which uh yeah, I, I just wanted to you know avoid those spoilers because people can be so careless online. We won't even get it all into that. <laughs> but um, I want to jump really uh right into it with. I made a very conscious decision to go see this by myself because I knew it was going to be an emotional movie, and um, it does start off. Uh, very emotional you know it jumps right into black panther's um funeral which um they didn't get too detailed about what caused him to die we just know some some mysterious illness basically um and I, I don't think there's really so much mystery behind that necessarily i think they just didn't want to dwell on it necessarily you know yeah um, i thought they handled that really well because yeah i didn't really need to know uh you know the important part was that he passed away yeah and uh i thought yeah i thought they handled that really nicely and in my theater when the screen, you know, turned into the Marvel logo and it will all just, you know, images of Chadwick Boseman, um, you could hear a pin drop in the theater. Like, and, and my theater was packed. It was completely sold out and nobody said a peep during that. And the only thing I could hear was people sniffling. So yeah, it really, exactly. it really hit people hard. Yeah, I, I had that experience too, um, because they really, e each time they, they have really two, um, like sort of quick montages of images of him, um, at the beginning of the movie and then to, you know, at the, well, not really finale, but you know what I'm saying? At the end, the very end. And in each case they drop out the sound and that, that is really powerful the way that they decided to do that because then you can actually hear people crying. Um, it kind of reminded me of when I went to see, um, Fruitvale station, it was that same thing. There is a moment towards the end where the audio just drops out. You could actually hear people crying in the theater. So very powerful the way they presented his death. I do feel like they, you know, if you really just focus on it plot wise and not just focus on, you know, the actual tragedy of Chad Bozeman passing, but plot wise, it does feel a little bit like there's a plot hole there because this movie doesn't really address in game enough because it doesn't address the fact that if you think about it story wise, this would actually be the second time that they lost T'Challa. Um, and that's not really brought up. Yeah, that's right. You know, that didn't. That never dawned on me until you mentioned it. But yeah, that is kind of strange. It would be like the second time. Uh, but maybe an end game because it. Yeah, that, that is a little bit of a plot hole. Really, I, I really, <laughs> I really have yeah, no uh, defense I think for that's that. Why, I think that's why there was a theory going around that maybe this movie, the events of this movie take place during that um, five year gap, which it would have made sense if they actually worked that in because. Um, I don't think it would have thrown thrown off like anything else that came after Endgame because like with Namor, who of course will get heavily into him soon, like you know, his, him and his people are still pretty much secluded and in you know hiding overall. So I don't think it would have thrown off anything else that has come after Endgame. So it could have made sense to set it in that way. And then um I think it would have made it, you know, a little bit easier too to bring Black Panther back into it once the MCU was willing to recast him, because technically He'd, he'd be back in MCU anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, after uh, Hulk brought everybody back with his snap. But they didn't go that route. Um, I think it would have been an option for them. So it's it's a plot hole, but I don't think it's really something that needs to be dwelled on necessarily. It's, it's just something that does kind of stand out when you watch the movie. Yeah, I mean, like, if you try to put yourself, like, in a bubble, right? And if you didn't know Chadwick had passed away, um, and you just saw the first Black Panther, and now you're seeing this, and you really have you know, no idea what's going on besides what's in the movies. It is plot wise. It is a little strange um, that all of a sudden, okay, Black Panther is, you know, he's not going to be in this. Um, it is, it does hinge on you really knowing the world, you know, the real world events. That's why um, it kind of makes sense. Uh, but of course, you know, I I don't think they should, rec I, I kind of like that they didn't recast him. Um, I, th I just think that would be too distracting. For me yeah, personally. well, not yet, yeah, definitely not yet. But um, and we'll talk, you know, towards the end of this about their options moving forward. Um, but I will say, I, I actually remember, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because we're mainly focusing on Wakanda forever. But just another thing about Endgame, I remember literally sitting in the theater watching Endgame for the first time, and when it had that five-year jump, I was like, ooh, like um, 
that's going to be so many plot issues in the future. I just felt like that that's that's going to be, you know, it's going to cause some issues basically down the line. But um, and, and we have seen that in some other series and things, too, where the the blip or snap, whatever you want to call it, is just not addressed enough. But, you know, it is what it is. And, and I think as we move forward, you know, these movies, hopefully, I mean, there's still going to be overall events for the MCU, but hopefully we start to see more movies that can kind of stand on their own. And, you know, what Wakanda kind of forever, when it comes down to it, I think it can stand on its own, you know, as just this own piece of cinema. Yeah, I mean, and at the end of the day, they still are comic book movies, right? And crazy events like that happen in the comics all the time. And then, you know, two issues later, it's like it never happened, you know? So I can yeah. kind of forgive it. So um, big change for Shuri and, you know, big change for the actress, too. It wasn't recently, I like, until recently, I was, like, checking out some interviews and things, whatever, and really realizing just how much, um, how much stress must have been on this actress. You know, she goes from being this plucky sister side character to having all this emotional weight on her for this movie. And um, I think she did a good job with it um, overall, you know, from the very beginning with her mourning loss and the way that she um, kind of broke down during the funeral and everything like, you know, it's just very heavy, <laughs> heavy amount um, of, of emotion on her shoulders for this movie. Yeah, I I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of Shuri in the first Black Panther. I mean, not that I disliked her or anything. She was just, you know, kind of there, um, but definitely kind of overshadowed, I thought, you know, by Black Panther himself. Um, but in this, yeah, like, like her acting game really stepped up in this. And I don't know, she even looked more powerful. I don't know if she worked out or anything. Um, but it did cross my mind going, you know, isn't she kind of like a tech scientist, Um and then all of a sudden she's really good as fighting, you know, at fighting as as Black Panther, um, unless it's just you know the suit's so powerful and then the um, the heart the heart flower gives her I guess fighting ability too, or does it just make her super strong? I thought that was kind of weird. Um, I would think it would be better for like someone like Okoye to be the Black Panther, but I'm guessing they have to be kind of related. Um, it has it to be in the bloodline, like uh, right? Yeah, it seems like a lineage thing because once they take the herb, they do like kind of go on that, um, you know, a spiritual plane or whatever, and they kind of, you know, meet meet with the ancestors and everything. So I think it does have something to do with the lineage. I don't think just anybody could take it because remember she even said, you know, about the risk of having a heart attack, even taking it, even with her having, you know, being part of the bloodline. So I think, you know, if other people were to try it, it might not turn out so well for them. I mean, which makes me think also like, okay, well, when they first discovered that it was it just because this family was the first one to to drink it or they just did trial and error until one family was able to accept it a little bit you know a little murky it's it's, it's a bit works. of a it's a, it's a bit of a plot convenience i would say because when you think about um like namor and his people essentially they kind of have the same background going on except they're you know their plant that they um uh, took advantage of is slightly different but yeah. like all of his people seem to have benefited from it basically like they all seem pretty powerful so yeah it's it's a plot convenience i think when you think about the wakandans and how that happens and i think they're going to um make some changes with that moving forward too you know we'll see what happens with it because i mean now we know the flower has been reproduced so you will, we'll see where that impacts the mcu i will say this um one thing I didn't expect and I, I thought was kind of clever is, you know, in dealing with her mourning, like the the anger side of it, the rage that she felt in um, losing her brother and feeling like things were so unfair and she almost could have, you know, helped him out and everything. And so, um, and, and that did allow them to bring in, which I'm so glad this was not spoiled for me, you know, the fact that once she went on the spiritual plane, she saw Killmonger and he acknowledged like how much they are alike in her wanting vengeance. Um, a lot of that was just really cleverly set up to me. Yeah, that was a great scene. That was one that stuck in my mind was using Killmonger there and how, you know, it basically gave the we're not so different, you and I kind of speech. And but it but it worked. I like. Yeah. It. And I, I think that's a much better way to bring him back, you know, even in just that cameo form, as opposed to some people were saying, you know, maybe they like put his body somewhere where he could be restored later. And like, no, I don't I really didn't want them to go that route, you know, um, because he chose to die in the first movie. I thought that would have been very disrespectful to the character, you know, to bring him back later like that. So um, I, I like the way that they ended up handling that. And in her whole emotional journey throughout the movie, 
it worked for me. I, I do feel like, you know, I agree with you. I was kind of concerned about, well, how is she going to do all this fighting and stuff when she, she's a tech person? So they did put some of her tech knowledge into the way that she fought and everything. But but it's still a bit questionable. It would have been nice if we got maybe some of her like um, training with the Dora Milaje or something like that or training even one on one with Okoye. I thought that would have been nice if they worked that in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's just even if they did do that, then it would be, you know, kind of like a quick montage and it would just look like, oh, OK, well, now she can, you know, be really good. And, fighter. and, and I got to say, and it, yeah, it would have been at least would have been something, but yeah, not completely satisfying. And I will say um, this movie, I think some people are exaggerating the runtime. They're saying it's a three hour movie. To me, it's a little bit closer to two and a half because um, the credits are, I think, lengthy. But um Despite it be having this long runtime, I think there are some montages that still kind of hold this movie back. And um, yeah, it seems you know, to me the the runtime didn't bother me. Like the I, I thought mm-hmm. the movie because I I think I liked the movie maybe a little bit more. Um, it, but it seemed to flow really well. It did not feel like a long movie to me at all. Yeah, the the pacing was all right. I think there were some moments that dragged a little bit towards the beginning, but um. Because I, I can't remember what scene it was, but I know there was some one scene I was watching early on. And I was like, why are we still here? It just felt like it was time to kind of move forward. But the pacing, for the most part, worked fine for me. I, I didn't feel like it was too long. It's like a movie that I, I feel like I, I need to see it again, you know, kind of soon. And I wouldn't mind actually going back to the theater to sit and see it again. So that kind of shows that, the, you know, the t- run time is not bad. But still, like I said, even with it having all that time. They use montages in some points, and it's like uh, that's that's kind of not satisfying, including with um, Namor's background. Uh, and and I, I really want to hear your thoughts, you know, especially what you think about Namor, the way he was introduced, and especially his backstory. So Namor and you know the blue Mayan <laughs> homies that he's got were my favorite part of the movie. Like I totally loved it, and I didn't when I saw images and everything, I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. But seeing them on the screen, I thought it was a really good change for the – well, I guess you were saying Namor now, right? But um, for the Namor character, because, uh, I, I, you know, a lot of people don't like when they change uh, the origin stories and everything. But to me, I think this is an improvement. I think it makes them more interesting. And I like that they didn't just – kind of make a mashup of all kind of Mesoamerican cultures. This one was a specific culture from a specific place. Um, mm-hmm. So there were like real people. I, I liked that. And it didn't seem like just aesthetic, but you know, it, it actually, they actually felt like they were Mayans. And I thought that was really well done in my opinion. Yeah. I think that added a lot to it because I mean, uh, if they didn't do that, then I mean, it's like we're just looking at fish people, basically. Like, you know, it doesn't it's kind of like with Aquaman, you know. Um, I mean, I like Jason Momoa uh, as Aquaman. But when you think about his people as a whole, it's just it's, you kind of feel like, who are they? Like, we don't really feel like we know much about them. But connecting this, um, you know, N- Namor and his people to a real culture is like a shorthand, basically, where to where they feel more realistic to you. And. And by the way, nobody tried to kill us over how we each pronounce the name because they say it both ways in the movie. <laughs> you know, they do say it both ways. And I yeah, understand I mean, why they did that. I always change. thought it was I always thought it was Namar, right, growing up. Um and, and, and the way and the way they kind of, I guess, made it mean like the no no love. I think that of a was stretch. a little Yeah, I thought that was a little <laughs> corny, like um the priest saying, you know, oh, you're the son of a devil and stuff like that. Okay, that all makes sense, but the whole, oh, you got no love, seemed very crowbarred into there because, yeah, amor without the N means love in Spanish. And then I guess he put the N in front of it without the O, I guess, means, you know, kind of mashed it up. It is, I thought that was really forced. forced. Yeah. That was like the most forced thing in, in terms of a name since Martha and Martha, basically. Yeah. Like that's, I didn't that's mind weird. it, though, like, because overall, overall, I, I kind of liked everything about um, Namor. The only, I think the only thing that I didn't like, because all his scenes were so intense. I thought the actor did a good job, and he was delivering his lines in, in a very interesting manner where I just kind of wanted Namor to come back. Whenever he was off screen, I was like, let's get back to Namor. Like, that's what's interesting to me. Um, when he did, he did, like, one of those little Marvel kind of joke one lines, I think, when um, he was describing how how deep they are in the ocean, that it'll crush them, you know, if, if, if you know, oh, yeah. crush your bones mm-hmm. and break every bone in your body. And then he goes, oh, but we have suits, too. 
I was like, did you really need to throw that joke in there? Like, that was, yeah, that was a I little thought that bit was corny. Easy. That was like this. But that was the you... only thing I didn't like about it. Yeah, I wasn't super crazy about that either. Um, but yeah, he worked for the most part for me. He definitely felt threatening and just he was the way that the character really should be. Um, I think because you know in in the past in the comics he's been. Not, not always a hero definitely he's been a villain at times and there's been times where he's just walking in that gray area um i do think it will be a bit tough to uh if well it depends on what how people look at it i don't necessarily feel like he needs redemption necessarily um i think you know he is what he is and he did the things he felt he needed to do but for some people it might be a little bit tough to get over how cold he was when he killed ramonda um so i don't know it's gonna be interesting to see how they use him moving forward if he'll even get a solo movie or if they're going to work him in with the fantastic four it's just it's just gonna be interesting to see how they decide to move forward with this character yeah like he didn't he didn't come off as like a straight-up villain to me right he just came off like as a force and he just needs to do what he needs to do to protect his people um that kind of brings me to like another thing that i didn't like about the movie and that was his motive you know like the whole Ironheart thing and Riri Williams. I just didn't, like, I kind of wish they would have thought of a different way, you know, to to have it be the catalyst that starts, you know, Namor on his journey instead of, you know, needing to kill her. I, I just, I just felt like she did not need to be in this movie. Like, not, not nothing against the actress or the character or anything, but I just felt like she wasn't necessary for this movie. And they could have just thought of a different way to have him start the journey. I feel like it, it worked overall. That was actually one aspect of the movie I was okay with. Um, because in a way it made sense, you know, it's part of him protecting his people and she being kind of careless, um, you know, to create this device that could find vibranium. So the connection there with um, vibranium, I, I think it worked overall plot wise. Um, how how they um, implemented Ironheart maybe could have been better. Um, but, you know, just in terms of basic plot, I think it was a way to bring them together. I was kind of worried um, when I was seeing the previews for the movie that it was just going to be him trying to take advantage of, um, you know, T'Challa's passing to, you know, try to go at Wakanda, which I thought would have been very weak and, and very typical villainy. So him, you know, being a protector of his people, I thought was a lot better route for them to go. Which yeah, that would have been corny. That, that's I, that's why I do like um, what they did with Namor's origin. He's like, he's for, he's kind of like forced to do this, right? He's not just doing it just to be a bad guy. So yeah, I did like that. And and maybe like yeah, you're touching upon yeah the way it's written, it, it makes sense why he would want to kill her. And I think maybe what they should have done is introduce Riri Williams, but maybe not have her at the very end in the battle. Like maybe save that for a different movie and just kind of yeah, introduce I, her here and not that. have her become yeah. Iron Ironheart. Because like yeah, I think I, after I can, yeah after that she's not necessary. Yeah, because they kind of they made the they made her character feel redundant anyway. By like I knew the Midnight Angels were going to be an aspect of this movie. But their armor is basically like Iron Man armor. I was like, why would they do that? It just makes feel it really made Ironheart feel kind of redundant at that point. And I I didn't like that that the they made the Dora Milaje that um you know to use technology to that level. Like I know they use it. I know it's, it's based off the comics, of course. And Midnight Angels do come from the comics, but to take the technology to that extent, I I just felt like it was a, a bit much. Yeah, I didn't. That's yeah, that's another aspect of the movie that I think I could have done without. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Iron Manization of a lot of the characters, like even like Spider Man. I just wish he had just his suit. Like I don't like the Iron Man tech on him. And yeah, like yeah. The, the Iron Heart. Well, Iron Heart obviously, you know, got to be like Iron Man. But I, I still don't like it. I think it makes Iron Man less cool, right? If everybody can just replicate his technology so easily. Like it took Iron Man a long time to make his Iron Man suit. And I know uh, I know Shuri's like a genius and everything, but then she just got these suits unless you've been working on them. Um, but the fact that they're just like so fully functioning in like a week and everything, I thought that was a little lame. Plus, what's cool about Okoye is the way she fights, right? Like the way she fights with her spear and the, the way the Dora Milaje fight is just cool. Like to me, my favorite scene in the whole movie was Okoye fighting, um, I Atuma. forget his name, Atuma on the bridge. That was absolutely the yeah. coolest scene to it me. Really that, that's was. one of the best battles in a Marvel movie ever. It was just cool. Yeah. And to take that away from her and give her like, 
you know, a, a, an Iron Man suit is boring to me. Yeah, and see, um, that that's my thing too. Like, if it was just Riri Williams that was able to replicate the Iron Man armor, which is really the way it should be, it would mean a lot more. Uh, I'm like you. I don't like um, Spider-Man suit being so based around Iron Man's technology. That really did a disservice to Peter Parker. I don't like Shuri having the Midnight Angel suits basically being like Iron Man armors either. Because, again, like I said, that's that's a disservice to Riri Williams. Like, it really should just be yeah. Riri Williams being able to figure out how to create the armor and not do it in a montage in a week. Like like you said, that that was that was kind of absurd. That's why I said, like, montage has kind of let this movie down. Like, I feel like um namor was um you know done a disservice by that as well i mean it's good that we get his background but it it just goes by so fast like it just it just it felt like a disservice to the character and, and i felt like we could have spent some more time with his people like what is their world really like again that was like it felt like a montage like a quick tour of what their world looks like i don't really feel like we really dug into what their life is like though so um yeah the montage yeah, just, I, I just, yeah, I, they, just... They just they they didn't work for me overall yeah, and since Namor doesn't die, right, and um, neither does uh, Namora, the the blue, the his henchman, the woman one, and mm -hmm. it does. I forget. It, does a Tuma die? No. Um... Yeah, he makes it too, right? So I mean, we're gonna see. Like, it's cool that they left it open so we can see him again because it would have been a shame if it they would have just killed them off, kind of like how they killed off um, the God Killer, right? In in Thor Ragnarok, I was like, oh, he was a good villain, but uh, I guess he's gone. But I. It was smart of them to save them, and I'm glad it didn't just go, okay, well, Namar dies at the end, and that's that. Um, so I'm sure we'll be able to see more of their, the you know, where they live and their kingdom and everything in the future. I think they could have cut out 15 minutes of a lot of the Ironheart stuff kind of afterwards, you know, where she kind of wasn't needed when she was in Wakanda anymore, uh, where she was in Wakanda. I think they could have cut... 15 minutes of that and maybe add it to Namar's story. And I think it would yeah. have been more interesting. Yeah, I did like, um, I like seeing, um, Riri Williams, her, her first homemade suit. Although I wish they had just a, a better close up shot of it. Cause I felt like it was kind of at a distance and, and you know, we didn't get a really great look at it, but, um, I like that aspect of it, but I'm like you, I feel like, um, she didn't have to be like in, in the Wakanda battle. And I'm glad that that armor, though, that she made for that battle is just going to be a one-off thing, you know, that is staying at Wakanda is not going to be used again because I, I'm not crazy about that design, um, especially the way they did the helmet to where it's like trying to replicate her hairstyle. I thought that was such a corny detail. Yeah, you know, it's almost like, like a cornrow helmet. Like, I was like, come on. Yeah. Like, so I'm glad that's not going to be um, reused. And yeah, yeah, they definitely could have trimmed um, – some of her involvement like you said to use that better with namor because there there's a little stretch towards the end of the movie where he's just not around and yeah you really do start to miss his presence so what did you think about queen ramonda stripping okoye of her position like i think that is such like a, a cliche kind of thing where oh you know the hero kind of does the right thing and okoye was like almost willing to die you know for for the cause over here and then the queen, you know, has to be like, oh, I'll strip you of your position and all that stuff. I thought that was bad, well, bad writing to me. Uh, initially, it really bothered me. But um, and I, I got to say this, I got to give big props to Angela Bassett because she to me, I think she's, um, you know, it's debatable. I think, you know, I, I know that Namor is your favorite part of it. And in terms of acting, though, oh, I got to yeah. give it to Angela Bassett. Like she's amazing in this movie. Um, she's very open, very vulnerable, and like, yeah, strong in some ways, too. Like, that whole sequence at the beginning with her revealing, like, the dangers of letting Vibranium get out into the world um, by capturing those mercenaries. I thought that was really yeah, that was cool, cool how they did that. Um, and there, there's things about her character where she's, just, she's more open, and you learn more about her in this movie, I think. Even And I know this might seem like a, a minor thing to some people, but trust me, it's a big deal. Even the fact of her showing her natural gray hair is like it's just being very open and very vulnerable yeah. because you know a lot of women would not be willing to do that so um I, I loved her character a lot more in this movie and like i like like you i was initially annoyed when she um, was letting akoya go but then she had that amazing speech where she broke down why she was doing it and how she was feeling and i kind of saw her side of it i feel like if she had lived longer she probably would have reversed that you know once she calmed down some but in that moment she was just really hurt because like she said, she felt like she lost everybody and she didn't want, um, you know, Shuri to go in the first place. Okoye kind of pushed it. 
So that's why she felt yeah. like she deserved to hold her responsible for it. But like I said, you know, if she had lived longer, I feel like that's something that she would have reversed. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. Because I wasn't thinking about, like, yeah, Koya did push for Shuri to go. So I technically, I guess, you if you had to blame somebody, right? But I just think that Queen Ramonda is, like, pretty smart. So for her to be punishing her for something that obviously was not her intention and completely kind of unexpected, I, I thought was a little bad, but I, I see what you're saying. And and going back to Angela Bassett, obviously she had the best performance in the whole movie. And it is a credit to her to make somebody who, for me personally, I think Queen Ramonda, when I look at all the other characters, right, in a comic book movie, on paper, she would seem like she would be the most boring part, right? Or the part that is just like the least kind of fun and cool. But Angela Bassett did such a good job that it did make those scenes just as interesting to me as like the fighting scenes or when Namor was, you know, Namor and Shuri having their dialogues, which was another really strong, I think, aspect of the movie was yeah. um, when they were when they were talking. Um, and, and it's like some of my favorite scenes. Like, it, and it's funny to say that, oh, in a comic book movie, some of my favorite scenes were were some of the talking scenes. But this movie, I, I think, really upped their game with some of the dialogue. Yeah, and um, the scenes between, um, you know, Ramonda and Shuri, of course, her trying to get Shuri to um, mourn properly, um, that it felt so real, like it much, much more real than you typically get with the MCU. Um, so, yeah, I definitely appreciated um, those moments. And I will say this, I think um, part of the reaction that people are going to have to Ramonda letting Okoye go is because we love Okoye so much, like we... That that character could have easily just been a simple side character, but they have really made her an important part of the MCU, where you know you see her next to characters like the Hulk and and Black Widow and characters like that, and it's like you don't blink, you don't bat an eyelash. It's like yeah, she belongs there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like she's become that important to us. So on a personal level, that's why it's tough to see her let go. But if you think about it, just purely as a military leader not returning with one of their own. It's it's gonna be a problem, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, it's still tough, but I'm I'm glad that you know by the end, of course, she's back into the fold in a in a new way, kind of. Um, I guess you know moving forward, she'll probably be part of this like elite squad. Maybe I would prefer to see her back with her spear, you know, in her Dora Mal Malaji outfit. Hopefully, they'll go back to that because, like I said, I'm not super crazy about the Midnight Angels, or if they're going to keep the Midnight Angels around, let's make some adjustments to that, please, in the future. Yeah, that's why I just, that's why I really dislike that aspect of it, because it's like, if she goes back to just being Okoye, right, with her spear and her fighting skills, it makes you think, like, well, why wouldn't she use a suit <laughs> that makes her so much more powerful and less vulnerable to, to getting hurt, right? And then, you know, if, if they, but then if they keep the suit, then it's just kind of like, well, it's not a Koye anymore. You know, now it's just a, a flying character that shoots and stuff like that, right? It's just... I hope it's something we could just dismiss in the future because um, it's just not necessary, you know what I'm saying? And and it's not not the most practical thing either. That's one thing about the Dora Milaje is that they could move around pretty easily. And of course, you see them, they stand out. But I mean, you're not going to lose your mind seeing them going through a city. But somebody flying around in the armor, yeah, draws a bit more attention. So yeah, and that, that might be the way that, that might be the way they explain it off going like, look, I, I can't I can't be stealth with this thing at all. It's just it yeah. draws too much attention. And where where maybe I'm fighting off the cops now I'm fighting off the military or something, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, before we move forward, I, I do want to say one more thing about the Dora Milaje because you know I know you you and I talked about this privately that I know Marvel wants to have representation here and there um, for the LGBTQ community, but it's so weak in this movie. It's really a blink and you miss it moment where there, there's a relationship between um, two of the Dora Milaje in the comics, um, and they actually, I think they actually had like their own um, series at one point, but it's it's brought down to just a quick forehead kiss and a sweetheart line in this movie is so it's like why'd you even bother at all if you're not going to do anything significant with it so i, I don't know if, if the mcu is going to try to do any representation they got to do better than that in the future in my opinion yeah i mean honestly i i, I don't know where i was at but I, I missed that i just thought it was i honestly i just thought they were friends you know i didn't and it just kind of cared about each other like that's how kind of chicken shitty they, they did it right they almost did it like like a dog whistle like if you know um, that they're gay, then you'll pick up on it. But if you don't know, um, it could just go right over your head, which it did for me. Like, it just went over my head, and I didn't even realize it until you mentioned it. And yeah. 
yeah, they should kind of like but I, I know yeah you got to do baby steps and stuff mm-hmm. to not freak people out, but yeah, it's either do it or don't. You know, like yeah. this, this kind of half half ass way they did it isn't yeah. It's just it's why even what's the point? Yeah. So um, what what do you think about um how the movie kind of wraps up with like Shuri leaving? I I think Shuri I think her leaving to go to Haiti um getting out of Wakanda for a while I think is really healthy for her character when you think about everything that she's been through. Um, but what do you think about M'Baku being left to lead? And then, of course, the reveal of Prince T'Challa, you know, T'Challa's son. So pr- the Prince Prince T'Challa showing up, um, at first I was like, oh, well, that's convenient, right? Because um, I, I guess they're going to want to have, you know, a future uh, Black Panther. Um, I... I yeah, I, I kind of feel indifferent about it. It's like, okay, well, yeah, that's kind of cool. They had the son, and it makes sense why they would have him in private, I guess, the way they explain it. But I don't know. Like, I, I feel like you would think that T'Challa would want to have his son in Wakanda. Like, he would be, I think, a lot safer there than than in Haiti. But um, it, it's, well, I, to me, it just feels like writing around the fact that um, Chadwick Boseman died, right? It's just kind of writing around it. Um, so it's fine. Um, I'm just kind of indifferent to it. I think they should have explained why he's in hiding a little bit better. They they say they want him away from the pressures of the throne, which I think T'Challa would be okay with that. They may, they may have could have said something about them not being married. Maybe that would be an issue, like with the, the you know yeah. the council in Wakanda. I think that would have been a better angle to go with than just saying away from the pressure of the throne. Um, they they could have just explained that a little bit better, but. Uh, what I like about um, them having Prince T'Challa, though, is that Marvel really thinks long term. They really think down the line. So let's say they, you know, with um, Black Panther 3, let's say that they decide to have M'Baku actually somehow, you know, take on the mantle of the actual Black Panther. And may- maybe he wouldn't even need the herb. You know, maybe he could be Black Panther in his own way. <laughs> you know, yeah. like they don't have to get into that whole lineage thing and all that, you know, because um and Baku's already a powerful character, so maybe he could be a Black Panther in his own way um, and kind of hold that next movie. And then, you know, that'll give them even more time. Like, it could be, who knows, as long as, like, eight years or so from, from now to where his son has grown up and um, steps up to um, take the mantle. So it gives them time, I think, to build back up to um, a, full, a full-on new Black Panther with the same name, you know, T'Challa. So it, it gives them time. I think it's kind of a smart move to give themselves some options for the future. Yeah, yeah, I understand why they did it. It was good. Um, you know, spe- like going back to kind of like the action and stuff. What did you think about um, the siren call? I thought that was pretty they, clever. I thought it was it was nice that they added that that creepy element to it because especially when the um when we first meet um Namor and his people and they're attacking that that ship, it's like it's almost like a horror movie at a point. Like, it gets really yeah. creepy at a point. I thought that was such a great way to introduce them. One thing I couldn't remember, though, did they ever actually show, like, where the siren call was really coming from? Well, I think it's it I think it's them, because, like, they're... It is just them? Yeah, because they're kind of, like, poking out just kind of like how a mermaid would, right? They're kind of, like, sticking mm-hmm. their head out of the water, and they're and, they're, and their heads are angled up, and they're all kind of looking in the same direction. So I feel okay. like it's them producing it. Although... Well, I guess what they absorb um, through their skin, right? The water, like the oxygen. Because I was just thinking, was because they need that mouthpiece when they're out of the water. But I guess they don't really breathe through their mouth. They breathe through their skin. That's what kind of threw me off. Is like I wish they would have actually shown this siren sound being produced, and maybe that would have took away some of the. I guess maybe they wanted it to be a little bit mysterious, but at the same time, it does kind of draw that question. Well, well, how is this actually being? Or it might I mean, be a little goofy looking too, like if they actually show, you know, the faces and like the voice coming out. Maybe they tried it and I was like, ah, that looks a little goofy. Maybe we don't it need it. Be, it it just... could be a cut that was made. Yeah. yeah. Also, but did it was, they, but it did was they explain, a nice thing. Did they explain really um, that they're only blue outside of the water? Because when they're in the water, they're not blue. Did they explain that and I missed it? or Or did they just kind of like, when they're out of the they water, they're blue. Did, when they're in the water, during the during the um, origin montage, I guess you would say, you know, remember when the people first took the plants on um, their their version of the heart shaped herb, basically, and um, it's like they died and were resurrected and they turned blue and then they they went in, but when they went to the ward, I can't remember if we saw their skin change back um, for sure, but yeah, uh, I, I think was, they I... did try to touch on it, but not not enough clearly. 
Yeah, because like ha- halfway through, when all of a sudden I see uh, like a Tuma in the water, I was like, oh wait, he's not blue there. And it, mm-hmm. and, and I was like, did I? Was I just not paying attention? Did I miss something here? Um, it was kind of cool, but it reminded me of. Did you ever see Luca, the Pixar movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminded yeah. me of that. Like when when they go out of the water, they change. I was like, what? Yeah, it's 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 a little bit awkward. It is true to the comics, though, of course. But um, and you know, with uh, with Namor, of course, being a mutant, um, he's different. Um, he doesn't have that change. But uh, yeah, it could have been a little bit clearer, I guess. I, I think people understand it. Um, you know, with a couple of scenes, they they understand what's going on there. And they, I, I'm surprised at how cool they made little ankle wings look. Because at first, I was like, uh, I've always thought that was kind of a goofy aspect of the character. I was like, the little ankle wings. But the way they did it, and, and yeah, I guess it, the way they made it look, it seems like those little wings are more to like steer him the way like yeah. the back rotor of a helicopter steers, right? And he must have some kind of magical powers where he can just fly. Yeah, that, um, that's what I got out of it too, that they're mainly like steering him. And um, they did it kind of like, you know, hummingbird wings basically. So, yeah. um, which if they, if they did any slower, it definitely would have looked very silly. But the fact that they did it like kind of rapidly like that, it, it does work. His movement overall does look pretty cool. Yeah, it surprised me. And the special effects were were pretty good, like, because having a guy flying around with little wings on his ankles and, you know, throwing water bombs and stuff could have been really bad. It could have been as bad as, like, the CGI in, you know, in the first Black Panther. Um, mm-hmm. in, in this one, it was pretty flawless. There was really no scenes that looked so bad or too green screened or too much cgi that kind of took me out and like was exhausting to me even yeah. though it, it, it could have easily been that way yeah the issue with the first black panthers they they just did not give the effects people enough time i think they could have smoothed out some things i don't know if the rhinos would have looked any better but at least that final fight with killmonger could have looked better if they were given more time to do that properly um but yeah with this one um I, there's a lot of big action on the screen for sure, but honestly, you know, again, uh, like we talked about earlier, it's that fight with Okoye and Atuma that really stands out. To me, I, I don't care how much CGI you put on the screen. It cannot be good fight choreography. Good fight yeah. choreography is just just epic on its own. Like, it doesn't need all, all that CGI flash. I will say, um, though, uh, some of the movement and things going on with Shuri towards the end, you know, when she was, like, fighting on the side of the ship and all of that, that did look pretty cool. Um, some of some of that action, but yeah, that that fight on the bridge was the main fight that stood out to me in terms of the action. Yeah, Shuri looks great as Black Panther, um, because she's so tall and kind of like strong, right? Um, I thought she looked really good as Black Panther. The only thing I didn't like was that she still had her little kind of handgun things. I'm like, well, you know. Well, I think that was meant to show that, like we said before, she's the technology person. So she put in something that she was familiar with. And yeah. the way she used it, it wasn't like a crutch. She just used it in, in a way that made sense, you know, to knock some of the um, some of Namor's people off the side of the ship did make sense. Now, I will say, though, you know, we talked about this before, too, privately. It made no sense to me for the Wakandans to put just little small fraction of their army out in the middle of the ocean to draw yeah. Namor. <laughs> like, that seemed like such a bad idea. And in fact, right when they were... um getting surrounded at the end where it's like so much of the Wakandan, I guess, cannon fodder, you could say was already taken out and it was just down to characters that we were more familiar with. I'm like, do they not see how flawed this plan (laughs) was? Like they couldn't think of a better plan than that, or at least have more of their military on standby. Like where did their fleet of ships go and everything? Like it just, so with, with the writing, that was definitely like an effort, I guess, to, to raise the stakes, I guess you would say, but it didn't make a lot of sense in the long run to me. Yeah, the, the final battle, did it not seem like that that the final battle in the movie was maybe like a battle that would happen halfway through a movie? It just seemed it didn't seem like a climactic battle to me as yeah, much. Of like, course, of course at the very end when that, you know, when they, you know, they sure you get stabbed and all that, that feels climactic. Yeah. But it feels like this is part 1 of a part 2 movie. Well, the thing is, like, to me, like, Superb. don't don't stress all throughout a movie and even say even have Namor say it at the very end that Wakanda is one of the most powerful nations in the world. And then you have this battle where they don't use their power. Like, it's just yeah. that 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 didn't make sense to me. Like I said, it was a very weak attempt to to raise the stakes. in. But, you know, really beyond Ramonda um, being killed, like beyond that, it was basically just cannon fodder that we were losing in the movie so it it actually didn't feel like the stakes were being raised so much towards the end although overall um the battle between 
um, Sharia Namor. It was decent just because it had good emotion behind it. And it did make some good use of um, slow motion as well. You know, it sometimes can be a crutch, but some of the slow motion shots were actually beautiful. So overall, what rating would you give it? And do you think it's better than the first one? Uh, you know, I've been I've, I, initially like my my feelings the last couple of minutes sitting there in the theater. I, I felt a little disappointed overall. I think the more that I think about the movie, I do appreciate it a little bit more. So I'm, I feel like I'm kind of hovering between a seven and eight. I think I would have said seven initially. I might be up to an eight. I feel like I need to see it one more time to be completely sure. But I'm kind of hovering there. Um, I will say overall, I do actually feel like it's a stronger movie than the first. There are some things I liked about the first, but I feel like um, I feel like Shuri got developed a lot more as a character in this movie than T'Challa did in the first movie. I feel like we didn't know him enough. Yeah, um, he, He's just like this very noble guy, a likable guy, but I just feel like we didn't know him enough as a person. It was a shame that we learned we got more emotional death with Killmonger than we got with T'Challa in the first movie. Killmonger ended up being the big stand out there in the first movie. And of course, you know, we talked about the issues with the CG in the first movie. So overall, I do feel like this is a better movie. Um, you know, wherever I landed with the points, I would definitely probably, you know, put this one at least a point higher. Um, and like I said, I, I feel like I need a, a rewatch, though, to to really, um, you know, settle on how I feel about it. Um, what about you? Yeah, I, I think I definitely enjoyed it more than the first Black Panther. The, the first Black Panther, I kind of put it in the middle of the pack when it comes to Marvel movies. Um, not one of the worst, not one of the best. Um, but it had, you know, Killmonger was definitely a highlight of that. And of course, Black Panther's cool too, but it wasn't the first time I had seen Black Panther. So to me, when I think about the first one, Killmonger really stands out, and Umbako too, you know, and of, of mm -hmm. course Okoye and them. But um, I, I would I would give it like a nine. I'm pretty I, I am pretty generous with the scores on Marvel movies because to me, I I kind of judge movies on um what they're trying to do, right? Like I I could call like The Godfather one a nine, and this a nine. But I don't think they're equal movies, right? And I don't think that they're just, you know, one's not better than the other. Like, Godfather's definitely better than this. But as a as a comic book movie, um, as a Black Panther movie, I am complete. I was completely satisfied with it. So I would give it, like, a nine. And I, and I do think it's better than the first. And I do yeah. think that Namar is one of my favorite villains when it comes to Marvel now. Like, yeah, Thanos is good. Um, but I don't know. Na Namar, to me, might be my favorite Marvel villain now. Yeah, and I hope they use him smartly moving forward. Um, there's a lot of possibilities with him. I, I really do feel like he needs to be involved in the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom. Um, you know, maybe even um when they bring in the X Men. Uh, yeah, I think I see him being in the mix there. So Marvel's got a lot to set up for the future, though they got a lot to deal with, and um, that's why I said I know they're thinking very long term because they don't want to rush certain things. So yeah, he could be a major player in the future of the MCU. Um, couple of little quick things I want to do just to go over, just to kind of wrap this up. For one thing, uh, did, well, did you see it in 2D or 3D? I saw it in 2D, man. I, I'm too old for 3D. It makes my head hurt. <laughs> yeah, I'll say 3D, um, not really worth it. Um, it. It's one of those movies where you go you go on these long stretches where you start to feel like, why am I wearing these glasses? Like, this is not affecting <laughs> anything. You know, and Marvel tends to do that a lot. You know, they'll just have certain sequences where they really add in 3D effects. So overall, if you see it in 2D, you, you're not missing anything there um the music i, I want to say touch on the music real quick um i like a lot of the score i think the score is way stronger than their um music choices you know songs by you know like major artists and all that um the score is better especially I, i'm a sucker for the dora milaje's theme like whenever that comes in it just gives me chills i really like that so um and, and the song choice they had for when namor was taking shuri through and showing him his people i was like this doesn't quite feel right for Wakanda forever. It was kind of an odd song choice to me personally, but it, it it didn't really bother me too much in the long run. But I just feel like I think they need to lean on the score more so moving forward than a soundtrack, you know, necessarily. But um that that's just a little thing. Um in terms of possible awards, I hope that Angela Bassett gets some attention. I hate how they kind of overlook comic book movies, but I think she's very deserving. And I think the costume and again um it's, I think her name is Ruth Carter, if I'm not mistaken. She's a legend. I think she got nominated for the first Black Panther. She's probably going to get another nomination. Some of the costumes really do look good. Yeah, the costumes were amazing in this. And my especially especially uh, Namora and Atuma, to me, I think that design for them 
was really cool. The the yeah, orange feathers, all that huge, stuff. Yeah, That's, that was it amazing. It had to be a huge undertaking for her as a costume designer. There's so many costumes in this movie. Like it's just that's a lot to take on. See, and I don't know if like I really don't know anything about her or anything, but I would imagine she has a team that yeah oh know, yeah no doubt she has a team she, but she's kind of like a for that department for that department still it's a huge undertaking especially when you think about the number of extras and everything that's just just a lot to deal with so but they did a good job with it for sure yeah and i, I, think, I definitely think that they should be nominated for for the costumes and it's so yeah. so should angela bassett but she won't be you know they, they'll they will not nominate her if she's not, I just hope that it's it's fair though that you know the other nominees, whether yeah. whether we're talking Oscars, Golden Globes, whatever it is, I hope that you know it's because just because it's such an amazing year for actors, basically, you know, then it's understandable. Yeah, yeah but basically. horror and comic book movies, man, like yeah, it's it, but I think they don't respect how hard it is sometimes to make, you know, a character in a comic book movie, like compelling, right, and make you emotional. Um, I just don't understand why why they just don't want to budge and uh, acknowledge it. Yeah, there there are some things that are really going to be underappreciated about this movie. Even even in Baku, I think is going to be underappreciated. His character, one one thing I like about his character is you see him so, kind of softening some. Like you see, it seems like he's been influenced by T'Challa a little bit. Um, and his he still has the comedy too. Like he got a a great comedic reaction by doing just a reaction under when he was underwater for a moment. I'm like, do people realize how difficult that is to do? <laughs> like, yeah. So l- little things like that, unfortunately, yeah. You know, when it comes to major, um, m- major media, they they kind of overlook some of these things. Yeah. Um. I don't. I forget his name, but uh, Umbaku's actor, when he's on screen, he's very naturally mm-hmm. charismatic. He's just very charismatic. Um. You mm-hmm. just kind of instantly like him. Yeah. Um. Which, yeah, definitely, Umbaku was one of my favorite parts of the movie for sure. Yeah, and that's why I say I'm I'm very interested to see what they do with him uh, moving forward. And if they they decide to let him carry a third movie, I'm down with that. I think he can handle it, and I think it's deserving as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I would be down for that. I I don't know, I don't know if I could, I don't know if like he, if you put him on screen too much, right? Like where he's the main character, and you know, 80% of the movie has him in it. It might be like too much of a good thing because he is such a character, right? Like. He's not very subtle. Um, so to me, he works definitely as more of a secondary character. I think the thing is, though, that, um, well, for one thing, you know, we, I think before Chadwick Boseman passed, I don't think people would expect, um, you know, Letitia Wright Shuri um, to carry the movie the way that she did. So, so you never know. But and, and also, I think that I don't think Marvel would have it where it is completely focused on him i think there's going to be big other aspects you know the same way that they had namor being a major factor in this movie i think there's going to be another big element or two in the movie you know to where it's it's not so much just on his shoulders you know but um we'll see what happens with that um do you have any other thoughts you want to share no Uh, that's it oh i oh one more thought um because we didn't really uh talk about nakia at all um i was i was how, how that, did I say? Is that how they say it? I think somebody I did say it different than what I expected. Um, that's just Nakia, or is it Nakia? Yeah. I don't know. Regardless, anyway. yeah, you know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, Lupita Nyong'o's character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I liked her too. Like in the first one, I thought she was kind of boring. Um, but in this one, I liked it. And uh, her Spanish, I have to say, her Spanish was absolutely flawless. Like it's, it's rare to see someone uh speak. Spanish spanish in movies because for some reason they always cast people that just can't speak spanish very well like kind of like uh it reminds me of breaking bad um uh the spanish in breaking bad a lot of it's so terrible so like if you're a natural like spanish speaker it really takes you out of the show because you're like dude, you're trying to tell me we're these are mexicans in mexico and, and they can barely speak spanish you know and, and, it, and it's bad if you're an english speaker you don't notice it but i do and her spanish in this was perfect and, and i thought that was really really impressive and i want i wanted to mention that i'm not sure about her um oh it's because um she's um kenyan mexican yeah so yeah she was born in yeah she was born in mexico city but i think she went back and i think went back to nairobi um when she was a, like a baby like when she was either one or three or something like that but then because her father was a teacher in mexico he sent her back to mexico when she was a teenager to learn Spanish. So that's mm-hmm. kind of why it's so good. But 
I would imagine since her father taught in Mexico, he probably knew Spanish. So he might have talked to her in Spanish, even in Kenya, you know, growing up, because if she just went to Mexico and learned as a teenager and developed a perfect accent like that, that's pretty impressive. But I have a feeling that maybe her father and mother maybe spoke to her in Spanish growing up, too, and kind of helped um, have an act like a perfect accent like she has. Yeah. Well, I feel like for I feel like for her character in Shuri for the third movie, um, I don't know how some other people may feel about this, but I feel like let those characters rest for now. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, let's let's see some other aspects of Wakanda and um, other aspects that MCU brought in as well. And then, you know, maybe down the line, like I said, eventually get back to the point where um, T'Challa's son is ready to, to step up. But for now, yeah, I kind of want to move in a, a different direction. Um, and we'll see what happens. You know, they got plenty of time because I know there's not going to be a third movie anytime soon. It's not even on a slate right now for Marvel. because Marvel has so many other things that they need to focus on right now. But uh, we definitely want to hear from you all. Uh, you know, what did you think about the movie? Like, what were the highlights for you? What are some things that you wish could have been done differently? Um, you know, just the strengths and weaknesses of the movie overall. What are your thoughts about it? And uh, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to uh, check this out and listen to us ramble our thoughts about this movie, which is one of the major movies of this year. Um, and honestly, um, I know some of the other um, comic book movies that are coming up soon. Um, it's going to be tough, though, to, to to kind of top this one just in terms of impact and scope. I'll, I'll say that even though um, I still have some mixed feelings about the movie, yeah, it's going to be kind of tough to top this just in terms of how important it feels, you know, moving forward. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the next year or so with comic book movies. Uh, anything else you want to say to the people? No, that's it, man. Thanks for listening. All right. We appreciate you all. You all take care. Talk to you again real soon. I'm not going to